All right, everybody. I talked to A24 last night, and I think we're going to make it. So X tells the story of a group of people who rent out a guest house in rural Texas to make an independent porno movie and then find themselves in the fight of their lives. So it's been no secret on this channel that I have had a rocky at best relationship with A24. I think that they are a very interesting and very professional, obviously, uh, film studio, but for the most part, they tend to be films that don't really work on my wavelength. There's some of them that are great, there's some of them that I really do appreciate, but more times than not, they tend to be films that just don't quite satisfy me, don't satisfy my specific taste, in horror films, in films in general, they tend to be a little bit more artsy, a little bit more abstract than what I tend to like when I turn on a movie. And so when I heard about X, this is a movie that was not on my radar whatsoever, started seeing posters flying around on Facebook, saw a couple of my peers given huge praise for it on Twitter, which I always take with a grain of salt, I started to give this thing a little bit more interest. So I checked this thing out last night, and I'm not even gonna beat around the bush, guys. This is one of the best horror films that I've seen in a very long time. I mean, this is one of the best slashers that I've seen in a very long time. And it's going to take a hell of a horror film to dethrone this as what's probably going to be my favorite horror flick of 2022. I walked into this thing completely blind. I didn't watch a trailer. I didn't read a plot synopsis. Literally the only thing that I knew was that it was A24 and that Mia Goth was in it because she was in the poster that I passed inside of the lobby of the movie theater. Nothing about this film I knew walking into it. And I'm telling you guys, I champion that approach, especially when it comes to horror films. Way too often, horror films in their trailers give away some of the best parts. They set you up with a lot of knowledge that kind of ruins the experience, ruins the tension and the surprise in movies like this. So if you have not already seen a trailer and you're already sold, just go check out this movie and come back and watch the rest of this review. So starting off with the positives for X, what I really appreciated about this movie, especially being that it was from A24, was that to me it found the perfect mix between a good old fashioned dirty slasher movie, but also having a bit more of an artistic merit to it. It had some filmmaking aesthetic, it had some grit and some grime that was stylistically put on here to capture the era of the 70s. There's certain transitions that are used that are very modern filmmaking, but also have this old school aesthetic to it. So it kind of meets both criteria in a weird way. And it finds ways to give you everything that you go to a slasher film for while not falling into the constant pitfalls and the constant low-hanging fruit that this genre just falls into and falls back on way more times than I would like it to. You guys constantly hear me bitching about the scripts in slasher films to where I get annoyed when it feels like a filmmaker has to make their protagonists or side characters extremely stupid or insult the intelligence of the audience in order to make their film work. To me, slashers have always had the ability to be above that. And this is one of the few films that does not fall into any of those constant pitfalls that I get annoyed with where people have to act like morons to keep this premise going for more than five minutes or have to act stupid for the killer to be able to just wipe out everybody before the last reel of the film. None of that is here. You buy into the premise, you buy into these characters, you enjoy all of the characters, you understand the motivations of the killers in a kind of weird fucked up way, and you also understand why mass hysteria doesn't break out and all these people don't just drive off of this little piece of land in Texas. It makes sense and it makes for a damn good slasher film. And they really did a great job at giving this the vibe and the tone and the aesthetic of a 70s horror film. This takes place in the 70s. They have all of the outfits. They have the dialect. They have the technology and the video cameras. They got all the little niche details down that people who were actually alive in the 70s are people that really know the 70s are going to appreciate like music one of the few times where i see a movie and i'm like hey every song in this fucking movie actually came out in the 70s good job you use google but even the approach of the film and the atmosphere and the tone throughout it gives you those old like texas chainsaw era vibes in a weird way this movie is like if you turned on boogie nights 
and then about 15, 20 minutes into that movie, you flipped over and you were suddenly halfway through Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I want to be in the movie. Well, you can't. The story can't just change midway through. Just... And I've got to tell you, the premise of this film sets up a scenario and sets up a villain that to me was the perfect mix, yet again using that term, perfect mix of extremely disturbing but somehow uncomfortably hilarious. There was so many points in this movie where it wasn't going for laughs. It's not a horror comedy. It's definitely taken itself dead serious with things that it's going for and things that it's exploring. But there were certain things happening on screen where I had like this uncomfortable giggle and I was like looking around like, oh shit, am I fucked up or is everybody else laughing? Hey, he's smiling, he's smiling over there. Oh, there's tits on screen, that's why. I'm not gonna tell you anything about why the killer is doing what the killer is doing, but as the movie explores that motivation for this person and how it just snowballs from there, I found it fucking genius. It's something I've never seen before and how far they take it by the end of the film, it was hilarious to me in the best way. All of the performances all across the board were all great. Now these are not like going for Oscars, but for what a slasher typically asks from its cast, everybody here is going above and beyond that. Everybody here has an interesting piece of their character. You get to know just enough about all of them to where you are invested and you do understand why they are here and you do like all of them. There's nobody in this movie that stands out as this asshole or this piece of trash or this chick that won't shut up or any of those caricatures that always find their way into a slasher film that everybody debates on whether or not we love this character for how terrible they are or we just wanted them to die immediately. Nobody here like that. You understand everybody's purpose in this story from the villains all the way to the protagonist. And no matter how big or small the screen time or the screen presence these characters have, you like and understand and know enough about all of them to invest in their story. I also thought that the film was really well paced. Now it doesn't hit the ground running. This is not one of those films that within five minutes you've got kills and you've got blood and guts. It takes its time setting up the tone, setting up this premise, exploring more of the Boogie Nights side of this storyline for a while there, which some people are gonna really like and then eventually starting to devolve into that really dark and twisted side of this film. And all the way throughout it, it just never felt like it was at a lull. It never felt like it was starting to meander. I never found myself checking my watch or wondering when the next kill was gonna come. And it found a good point to end the film at that didn't feel like it cut it off early for some weird artistic vision that just like, ah, that's all you get. Now fill the rest in yourself, fucker. While at the same time trying to recapture that good old fashioned dirty slasher film, can't overstay its welcome too long. And above all, I just wanna give praise to Ty West, the filmmaker that gave us this gem, because there's even like meta in movie references where the cameraman is talking about how, you know, you can make a good dirty movie. And that felt like that was the intent of this film. It's like on its surface, this is a good old fashioned trashy slasher film, but we're gonna elevate the fuck out of this thing. And I think that every single aspect of that concept, of that promise, was executed here. The only thing that I can say against this, which I will put into the mixed category, because it's not something that I was inherently negative on, it was just something that if I had to ask for a little bit more, I could have used a little bit more gore, a little bit more creative kills in this film. That's something that's a tall order anymore. I mean, we've been having slasher films for decades at this point. It seems like coming up with new inventive kills is just a Herculean task for a filmmaker at this point. So I will only say that, is that the kills are good, the kills are effective. There's a good, subtle amount of gore here and there and some very gratuitous parts of gore and others, but I would have appreciated seeing maybe one or two kills that I have haven't seen before and I wouldn't say this film delivered that. So all in all guys, I absolutely loved this movie. It came out of absolutely nowhere for me. Such a gigantic surprise. If this thing does not end up being my favorite horror flick of 2022, I will be genuinely surprised. I loved the throwback feel and the throwback approach to this slasher film. While I really appreciated the fact that they were able to implement some of that new age artistry without overshadowing the film, without making it feel pretentious, without losing sight 
of the ultimate goal and the ultimate target audience that this was going for. To me, this was an absolute knockout. So if you're a fan of slasher films or if you're a fan of more modern elevated horror, definitely check this thing out and support it in theaters. And when it finally comes out on video, add this dirty bitch to your collection, go out and buy it. So what do you guys think of X? Is this something that has been on your radar for a while that you've really looked forward to, or is this something that came out of absolutely nowhere? Maybe you're just finding out about it with this review. Let me know your thoughts down below on this film. Thank you for watching and please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button. Of course, I do all the new releases, but I also do a lot of older films, especially horror flicks. If you are a horror fan, you don't want to miss any of that. We're in the middle of a Wes Craven review series right now. So hit the subscribe button so you do not miss any of that upcoming carnage. Thank you for watching once again. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.